as per your request, today we're going to dive deep into the world of organic clay bars and synthetic clay mitts and pads. I often get asked, for those just getting into the business, um, which would be best for me, which is safer for the car? Well, let's take a closer look, because I don't think there's a really clear, clean choice to make. I think it's personal preference. Let's get into this, and I'll show you why. There are many, many examples of both traditional organic clay bars and also synthetic pads and mitts. When it comes to the clay bars, they'll normally come in three grades. That's going to be a mild abrasive um, clay bar, medium abrasive, and coarse. These can be taken out of the package, used directly, stored in their containers. There are some that um, are stored in their container with a little bit of moisture, with some water. The pads and mitts, they'll come ready to use out of the pack, but it's best to clean them first because this one here comes with a coating. The best way to get rid of the coating, grab a glass cleaner, go to your windshield, lay down the glass cleaner, and work the synthetic mitt into your windshield. It'll remove the... Uh, the coating, the protective coating, then you're ready to touch your painted surface with it. You can also clean it with soap and water. The huge difference between the two types and then deciding on which type is best for you is the clay bar has limited use. Yes, it's a little bit cheaper. It comes in a kit or you can buy um, you know, a bundle of three or five for around $10, depending on what you buy. These are about $25 a piece and up. Um, this system here comes with a hook and loop for being able to attach to a backing plate or it has the pad here for around 50. They both need lube and I will only use either one of them if a car absolutely needs it and where it needs it. I will not unnecessarily use the mitt or the bar because they are abrasive, both of them, and both of them need to be followed up with some type of polish. Clay bar can be meted and turned over and uh, flipped over onto its clean side until it can no longer be used. If you drop a clay bar onto the floor, throw it away. It's going to pick everything up off of the floor and you do not want to introduce that to the surface of your car. If you drop a mitt, you can just rinse it off, take it under some soapy water and you would be good to go. Really hard to determine how many uses you can get out of these. That all depends on the, the condition of the car. You know, maybe three to six uses from a clay bar. You can also cut it in half, cut it in fourths. But when it comes to the pad itself, you know, that is also dependent on how you store it. I like to rinse mine, and when it's completely dry, I like to put it face up um, in a plastic container. When it comes to storage and your clay bars, they can go back in the container that you purchased them in. Uh, some dry. Again, some also need to be put away with a little bit of moisture. We're going to take a look at all of these very closely under a microscope um, before use and after use. We're going to take a look at the different grades up close, fine, medium, and coarse. We're going to take a look at the different textures and shapes and designs of your synthetic clay mitts and pads. We'll take a look at the, the grades and we'll also take a look at it before it's used and after it's used, how it pulls dirt from your car and how it entraps it in the materials of the bar or the mitt that you're using. When it comes to clay, you just fold it over to a clean side, but with, with the mitt or the pads, you rinse it free and we'll take a look at a pad when it's dirty and after it's rinsed and see just how much of that grit is released from the pad. So let's get to it. Uh, the clay bars here, uh, Adams fine grade, then we have Ardex with the medium grade, and we have Lithium with the coarse grade. We'll take a look at those up close. We're going to start with that, and we'll start with the fine grade, both unused and then used. Then we'll go to, this is the Auto Scrub system from Nanoskin. This is, I believe, uh, Grills Garage, and this is Mother's here. Working on a, a new GLE 43, it's practically new, but it does have some mileage on it. We're going to work on the bottom portion. Uh, it only needs to be clayed right there at that uh, body line on down to the plastic trim. So we're going to use both the uh, synthetic mitts and pads and the clay bars. Shave that off of there, shave the contaminants off, and see exactly how both of these tools work for us. What's the best way to see if you have contaminants on your car without rubbing your hand across it and marring the paint. Grab a sandwich bag, a nice thin plastic one, 
put your hand in it and very lightly go across the surface, you're going to easily feel the bumps and the little, uh, the tops of the knobs on the contaminants that are attached to the paint. And that's what you want to go after. If you don't feel any, there is no need to clay. Again, I cannot stress it enough. If you don't need to clay it, don't clay it. If you do clay it, you're going to have to grab a polisher, a pad, and at least a fine grade polish to follow it up. The first thing we'll take a look at is the Adams fine grade clay bar. And clay, natural clay, organic clay, is abrasive naturally. And let's take an example here. And what do I mean by that? The Meguiar's D301 is just a finishing wax. Not formulated or intended to have abrasives within, but naturally it has abrasives in it because a clay was added to uh, control moisture and the clay is abrasive. I can use this to correct very fine uh, imperfections have you, but it can be used to correct because it does have unintended abrasives in it. So these come naturally abrasives. Abrasives are also added in a mild, medium, and coarse form, so they will mar your paint. And that's just something I want to get across for those of you just getting into this. Uh, a polish will be needed right after the use of this, and that's why I only use it when and where it's needed only. So let's get this open. I have the black microfiber there for contrast when we lay the white clay bar down on top of it and get a closer look at these abrasives. mead this out into a skinnier piece here so we can get a better look. All right, as we're taking a closer look, you can see the abrasives, they're reflective, like little tiny pieces of glass. I'm going to zoom in and out and focus in and out. And that's a real good shot there. And even naturally, you could see the little speckles of dirt that are within the bar already. It wouldn't even use it. We just pulled it out of the wrapper itself. It is very sticky. It really holds on to whatever we shave from the surface of your car. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it pulls it from your car and gets it away from the surface, but it's bad because you cannot remove it then. You're going to have to meet it, flip it, until you have no more clean surfaces to use, and you're going to have to dispose of that bar. It can't be used over and over again like a mitt. So as I focus in on the edge of one of these bars, you can see just how jagged and abrasive they are. This is just a fine grade. We're going to switch over to uh, a medium grade a little bit later. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this clay bar over to the car, do a little bit of claying. Again, you're going to need a little bit of lubrication, a dedicated clay lube or some soap and water. And we'll work on the bottom of the GLE43, see what we can pull from it, bring it back over to the microscope and see what it captured, see what it pulled from the car. There's absolutely dedicated lubes for the clay bar, such as this here. There's also dedicated lubes for the auto uh, scrub system or any um, synthetic mitt or pad. You're going to find, however, that you can use both in any of the situations you come across. You could use this for both the clay bar and the mitt. You can use the um, glide from the uh, Nanoskin Auto Scrub system for clay bars and be successful using those in both situations. That's what we pulled from the bottom of the AMG. Let's take a closer look under the microscope and see exactly what we pulled and how it gets embedded within the material of the clay bar. Okay, so as we look at this up close, we can see the dirt that it pulled and embeds in its own material. And all of this, this is now part of the clay bar now. So this would have to be flipped over to a clean side, um, bent in half, Meet it until you have, uh, you know, a nice clean section of the clay bar to use. If you have none of those left, the clay bar has to be thrown away because this is what you have left.
This cannot be rinsed. It is now part of the clay bar itself. And to show a good example of that, you can see how the material itself has enveloped the dirt, trying to make it safe as you glide across the car. Very successful. Um, I often do just a very small area and keep flipping it, keep turning it to clean sides. This here happens to be another fine grade clay bar that there's no more clean sides to use anymore. So I kept it, put it to the side knowing this video was coming up. Let's put this under the microscope and take a look at this one as well. And as we take a look, we can see all the dirt that has worked its way into the material. It's now meted in and throughout the whole bar. This bar has to go, cannot be used anymore. All right, next up is a medium grade bar. Most of these are gonna be made in Asia or Japan. So let's tear this open, see what it looks like right out of the pack. We'll just tear it in half, use a little bit of it. It's very rare that I use something like this. I don't use the coarse grade at all. There's no need for it. Let's just tear a piece off. This one's very sticky as well. Flatten it out a little bit to get it under there. Now, something very interesting with this one from Ardex is it has fibers intertwined within the material of the clay as you can see here. These are thin clear fibers. My guess is that's polyester and that's part of scrubbing. So you're scrubbing with this bar and cutting as you get more abrasive. Again, I hardly ever use anything other than a fine abrasive, but I just wanted to show you what these look like. And even right out of the wrapper, you could see the contaminants that are within it already before we even used it. Let's take this and get some more work done on the AMG. And that's what we pulled off with this bar here. Let's take a closer look. And with the medium grade under the microscope, we can see what that picked up. That has to be flipped over, meted, made to disappear, get the clean side, keep on working. You'll see the fibers aren't poking through. That's also to keep the integrity of the bar itself together. For the most part, you won't see those poking out through the bar as you're working them. And now we have a very coarse grade to look at under the lights. Under the lights, yeah, like we're at a football stadium. Under the microphone. All right, I'm gonna zoom in and out and focus in and out on the coarse grade. So you can see here just how jagged and coarse this one here is. It's a little harder to see because of the color. But this is definitely one of the bars that I will not use. No need for it. It just abrases the paint, causes more work for you. By the way, this one is a a bit of a, a different texture than the others. This one actually gets stored in moisture and water. So let's take this one to the panel, the lower panel, pick up some dirt and see how it entraps it on this bar. This one here is very grippy, very slimy, but does a great job picking up even the, the most minuscule, tiny pieces of dirt and debris. Let's get this under the microscope. Okay, with this one. Under the scope, we can zoom in and out, and you can see how this bar here traps the dirt within its material. So all three, even though from different companies and a little bit different material, act pretty much the same in the way they pull and entrap the dirt within the material. All right, let's switch over and take a look at the mitts and pads. This one here 
It's a Creos Garage one. This one here comes with a film that you have to take off. I'll show you how to remove that. It just protects the surface and the material until you get to use it. All right, we're going to focus in. First thing you'll notice is that film looks grainy, but it's going to come off. We're not going to mar the car with that. We're going to remove it completely. But you can see the diamond shape pattern um, and the material itself pulls the dirt off in between these little pieces of design. They're all designed a little bit differently, but let's get this film off of here. We'll get it right back under the microscope and you can get a closer look at what the material itself looks like unimpeded. All you need to do is grab any glass cleaner at all. Spray it onto the material, spray it on glass, and work it into the glass. Circles and figure eight patterns. Then simply rinse it off and dry it, and you're good to go. All right, back into the microscope. Let's focus it in, and as you see here, kind of reminds you of an alien world. Looks like sand dunes, um, but as we move the bar back and forth, with that film removed, we're now ready to use it. A couple fibers from the microfiber I, I used to dry it. I'll blow that off. Let's go take this to the car and see what kind of dirt we can pull off with the Grios Garage um, synthetic pad. With the pads and the gloves, I like to use the uh, Nanoskin Glide, but as you can see here, I have an old clay bar attached to it. Like I said, they work both ways. It doesn't really matter. You get lubrication. As long as you have a little bit of lubrication, you're good to go with this. So I'm gonna spray a little bit on the pad before I even get over there, spray it on the surface, and then get to work. By the way, with a pad or glove, I'm going to work it a little bit differently. I'm going to do a crisscross patterns, cross hatch, up and down, then left and right, um, just to make sure that I'm picking up all the contaminants. That's going to be the trade-off with these guys compared to clay bars. Clay bars are more sticky and will pick things up. You're going to take a little bit more time and a little bit more extra care with the auto scrubs or the mitts or the pads such as these to make sure you picked everything up. That's the trade-off. You know, these will last a lot longer and you can do a lot more jobs. However, um, you're going to spend a little bit more time decontaminating. All right, let's take a closer look, see what this thing picked up. With the pad under the microscope, and we have things focused in, as I drag it back, you'll see the contaminants that are attached to the surface of this synthetic pad. What you will notice is it's not quite as dirty as the clay. The clay is more successful picking more things up. However, let's rinse this off. We're just going to use plain old water, rinse it off, put it back under, and you'll see um, how it cleans the slate, and you can keep using the pad over and over again. All right, I'll just take water from a 32-ounce bottle and rinse it. And I normally follow that up with some forced air. I want to make sure I removed everything before reapplying it to the surface of that car, even with the clay lube or the auto scrub, slide or glide or whatever you have, soap and water, doesn't matter as long as you have something for lubrication. With the pad back under the microscope, we can see the slate is now clear to get back to work with this pad, all the, well not all of it for for the most part. You can see where there's some damage right here. That's going to happen. It's natural. These are not going to stay together forever. There's a little bit of damage. If it catch, catches the edge of, say, an emblem or plastic trim or a headlight or a taillight, these little imperfections are going to happen. It's another negative of the clay pad or the mitt. 
but for the most part we are clean and clear and ready to get back to work. This pad here, it's like a little hand pad, fits perfectly into the palm of your hand, is from Mothers. This is a little bit more tacky. Um, so even from the package, you're going to see here, as you can see the different designs, not that far off from the last pad we looked at. However, you can see the little things, the little pieces of dirt that are already trapped in before we started to use it here and here. So it's a good idea to always rinse, clean your pad with soap and water or window cleaner before you get started. I'm going to do that, then let's get to work on the panel of uh, the AMG here, see what we can pull off. With the mothers back under the microscope, let's focus in. And look at that. It's interesting. It's like a river of dirt flowing through the unit itself. That is really cool. I did not expect to catch that. Let's see if I could focus, focus it in. Bring you in close. And that is a little stream of water carrying the dirt through the system. So that's how the um, scrub pad from Mother's Works and captures dirt. Let's rinse it and see just how much of that comes free from the material. Drawing it with forced air is the best. I mean, you use a towel or a microfiber, you're going to get the fibers stuck in there. With the pad back under, let's focus in. And as you can see, a lot of that dirt has been rinsed away. Let me drag the pad back through. And if, apart from some very fine specks here and there, we're ready to get back to work. And the very last thing I want to show you, this is a very old scrub pad. This is the auto scrub system from Nanoskin. It's got, a, you know, 50 bucks, but I got my money's worth out of it. I, I use it for quite a few cars, as you can see here. What I want to show you is what it looks like after all that use. When they get old, you're going to notice the texture gets harder. It gets stiffer. It's time to throw it away and grab a new one. It will not pick up the dirt anymore. It's going to mar your paint. With the auto scrub system up close, you're going to see the dry rotting taking place, holes that have been carved in, dry rotting causing cracks all the way across the surface and the material. This will not only pick up dirt and won't release it, but when you introduce it back to the car again, you're going to be doing some heavily damage and some marring. Just to show you what it looks like after a lot of use, after heavy use, the material just breaks down naturally. And for the final thought segment of the video, just like I mentioned in the open, I believe clay bar, traditional organic clay bar compared to clay mitter pad is going to be personal preference. Do you want the bar uh, where you need to flip it and meet it and you get limited use, it's cheaper, but it's cleaner, less work? Or do you want the pad or the mitt where you can keep it for a long period of time, it is a little bit more expensive, you can rinse it when you're done, put it away. And when you put it away, put it away in Tupperware or a plastic compartment with the material facing up and away from the way you store it. It will pick up dirt. If you lay it down, it will actually dry to the surface where it's laid and it's no good anymore. So it really, it is up to you and your personal preference. I want to know down in the comment section which way you lean. Do you want to go the organic clay bar, have a cleaner surface, a little bit less work, but the material and the bar itself just doesn't last. You can only get so many uses. If you drop it, you have to throw it away. Or do you want to invest in a pad that's a little bit more expensive? The auto scrub pad you can attach to a polisher. Use the auto scrub system to clean windows, uh, the whole surface of your car, really. Um, but then again, you know, you drop that, rinse it off, store it. Let me know which way you guys lean. Brian from Apex Detail. Catch you in the next video.